The story has it that in 1915, while looking for a suitable site on the coast to build and fly seaplanes, Robert Blackburn was stopped in his journey by military police during a zeppelin raid near Bruff, East Yorkshire. So it was by chance that he found everything he needed here. Access to water beside the wide Humber estuary, a railway link and space for a potential aerodrome site. 100 years later here in Brock, we're proud to be continuing our heritage as one of the longest continually operating fixed wing aircraft manufacturing sites in the world. And as part of BAE Systems, the state of the art Hawk aircraft we design, manufacture and support to this day are supplied to 18 air forces worldwide. The story I heard was that he was apprenticed to a company in Germany, I'm not sure which town, and he heard the Wright brothers were giving a demonstration in Paris, or just outside Paris, so he, he played truant. He jumped on a train, went to Paris, went to the exhibition, met the Wright brothers, said this is what I want to do, and he went back and gave in his notice for the apprenticeship. And Grandpa, my Grandpa, went to Paris thinking he was living it up with the girls and not behaving himself and said, you know, you're coming back to London. And he saw all these drawings and said, you know, humans are not supposed to fly and thought Dad was mad. Brought him back to, to, to Leeds and he, and he gave him a corner of the factory, Greens, with, with one mechanic. Um, and he said, okay, you can, you can go and design planes if you want. But of course, all the workers were so interested in what Dad was doing that it was disrupting the factory. So <laughs> he was banished out. They'd just closed up the factory at Leeds, which was the original Blackburn site. Uh, and we're driving over to the coast uh, to, for a, to see some uh, seaplane trials uh, on the coast the next day. Uh, and it just happened to coincide with uh, a Zeppelin air raid at the time, it was the First World War. Uh, so they had to, to stop off uh, nearby and they stayed at the railway hotel. And in the morning, uh, Grandad went off uh, for a, an early morning walk and found the property that was owned by Captain Harrison Broadley and thought that it was perfect for the, uh, trying the seaplanes. And Blackburns went on to specialise, of course, in seaplanes. Uh, and, he, and he wanted a site uh, on the Humber uh, and came back uh, and told my grandmother that it was just what he was looking for. And then he sent uh, the, the staff out to deal with the formalities of acquiring uh, the land. And then the, the, the factory started in the following year in 1916. The first years of manufacture at Bruff were a pioneering time of rapid development that saw dozens of aircraft designs realised. The general purpose or GPC plane of 1916 intended for naval patrol duties, bombing or torpedo dropping during the First World War. The Kangaroo land plane, one of the first military aircraft to carry wireless equipment and more naval torpedo carriers, the Swift, the Dart, the Velos and the Ripon. These early aircraft established Blackburn and Bruff as specialists in naval aircraft and the planes were in service with the fleet air arm throughout the 1920s. Typical of the pioneering designs created at Bruff was the mighty Kubaru biplane built in 1924. With a wingspan of 88 feet, it was one of the largest single-engine aircraft ever built. During World War I, Blackburn made aircraft under Admiralty contracts, most of which were designed by Sopwith, who's a famous pioneer and uh, they were for naval use, so it, it got him into the mindset of supplying the Navy. Um, and after the war, uh, Blackburn had a couple of goes at developing his own torpedo carrier. The first one was remarkably ugly and it wasn't a great success. He then went on and developed the Dart and the Swift, one developed from the other. And they could carry a larger torpedo than the Cuckoo, so they were a real threat to a capital ship. And they, they got the uh, attention of the Navy, and uh, this really got him into the torpedo-carrying business, 
which was the mainstay of the business after the First War. The same period saw development of the Bluebird, later to become the B-2, a popular training aircraft, the type of plane the Bruff workforce would later gain a worldwide reputation for producing. Less conventional by today's standards were the flying boats built at Bruff at this time. These huge craft, the Iris and the Sydney, rolled gracefully down the slipways to take flight from the Humber. The Navy did uh, commission numerous flying boats um, and Blackburns was part of that. Uh, he built them to Admiralty contracts. Um, and then gradually as speed became more and more important and um, structural expertise improved, monoplanes took over and Blackburns provided the Navy with their first uh, monoplane torpedo bomber in the skewer in the, in the late 1930s, which served into the Second World War. The last of the line of traditional torpedo spotter reconnaissance biplanes, the Shark, was still in service when war broke out again in 1939, while the Bruff-built skewer was the first British aircraft of the Second World War to shoot down an enemy plane. Rearmament and new military contracts in the build-up to World War II saw rapid development on the site. The general offices, canteen, clocking station, sheds, hangars, control tower and flying school were all built during this time. It was decided to concentrate war production on the fairy swordfish over the Blackburn shark. However, the major share of production was awarded to Blackburn. 700 barracudas alone were built at Braff in those years. The significance of Bruff to the war effort is evident in the visit to the site in 1940 of King George VI and Princess Elizabeth as the Blackburn workforce grew to a peak of 22,000 over eight sites. The end of the war brought new challenges to Bruff and the company undertook a variety of work in an effort to keep the factory occupied, including making baking tins, but there was still aircraft work to be done. Throughout the 1950s, more giants took to the sky from Bruff, with development and production of the 55-ton Beverly, an aircraft flown from the site by the Duke of Edinburgh during another royal visit. The Beverly was the first plane I remember there, and Dad took my sister and I up. Oh, he didn't pilot it, but he came with us, and we went up in this great big monster plane. I think we were only about sort of 12 and 14 and, and it, was, it shook and rattled, but it was an amazing plane. During the same decade, a new type of aircraft was being developed, a twin jet, low level, high speed strike aircraft known as the NA-39, the first of its kind in the world. It would later be called the Buccaneer. I think it was about 1954 when the NA-39 got the contract from the government and Dad came rushing home into the library and said, we've got the contract, open the champagne, Mum. And I remember saying to him, Dad, can I have a glass? <laughs> uh, and he was so excited about that. It was like a, such a thrill for him and he died three months before its maiden flight, which was sad, but he would have been so thrilled that the buccaneer, as it became, had such an amazing history and was still flying in the Gulf War. The Blackburn Buccaneer was the most successful and enduring aircraft to carry the Blackburn name. Although he never got to see it fly, it would go on to be Blackburn's longest serving aircraft with 35 year service and a 19 year continuous production run from its maiden flight in 1958 until the delivery of the last Buccaneer in 1977. At the start of the new decade in 1960, Blackburn aircraft became part of Hawker Siddeley Aviation. This enabled Bruff to expand its capabilities as a multi-purpose site and saw design and production work on a new generation of military aircraft alongside the Buccaneer. Bruff was designated a sister design company for the Phantom, providing work for the technical, production, flight test and product support departments for many years. Work in the development and production of the Harrier also came to Bruff, amounting to one third of the site's workload at its peak. The Bruff Design Office had been involved since the late 1960s in early project studies on a new trainer jet. 
In 1974, manufacturing at Bruff began on the wings and tailplanes of an aircraft called the HS-1182, later to be known as the Hawk. With the 1000th Hawk currently on order, Bruff has been central to the success of this enduring aircraft. At one time or another, all elements of Hawk production have been undertaken at Bruff. Design, development, manufacture and support capabilities all exist within the workforce at Bruff. Between 2008 and 2011, Hawk jets were manufactured and flown off from the site as completed aircraft. Dave Christiansen remembers the first maiden flight of this period. Obviously, it was, it was such an exciting time for the, for the factory and for the team within Final Assembly. It was, for the, many of the team in Final Assembly, it was the first time they had actually worked on an aircraft that was actually going to go through its maiden flight. All the guys were, were buzzing about the place with it being a first flight out of Bruff. Um, also, the, the whole factory was on standstill at that point. It was a full lockdown across the whole factory, so the whole factory were going to be watching what was going on on this aircraft. And I guess from a final assembly perspective, all eyes were on, on us and the team within final assembly. So we knew we were under some pressure to get the aircraft out there. We got on with the business. We got the aircraft fired up, the engines running, did the pre-flight checks. Everybody in Final Assembly was out there ready to watch. You could see the eyes across the factory, all looking across the place. I'm stood here now, hands is behind me back, and you've got your hands behind your back with your fingers crossed. And trusting in everything you've done on the aircraft and trusting everybody else what they'd done. To see the aircraft leave the ground was just a, a special moment. And the aircraft took into the skies. Yeah, pretty special. We are proud to have such a long association with the Hawk, continuing in our 100th year of aircraft manufacturing. Bruff is looking to the future now. As part of BAE Systems, we are home to the company's structural and dynamic test facility, conducting fatigue and environmental testing on a range of aircraft. £12 million of recent investments has seen the development of the site since the creation of an enterprise zone, homing some of our suppliers and many other businesses. Our activities have also left a mark on the community we are part of, with two of Bruff's pubs, the Buccaneer and the Red Hawk, named in honour of our aircraft, and continued links with Blackies, Blackburn Leisure Social Club founded by Robert Blackburn in the 1930s and still an important social and sporting hub for Bruff. It's amazing to me that a hundred years later, um, we, we, can, uh, we can still see aircraft being built at Bruff and people who still remember Blackburn Aircraft. So I wish, I wish um, you know, huge success for always and that there'll always be an aircraft factory at Bruff. Over our history, the site has hosted motor racing, family fun days, and in the last 25 years, raised 1.6 million pounds for charity. We continue to recognise the contribution our workforce makes and foster local education links and provide opportunities for new apprentices to join the business. And our heritage groups keep our past alive as we in Bruff celebrate our history and look to our future. So here's to 100 years of aircraft manufacturing in Bruff, an achievement we can all be proud of. <laughs>